Okay, this is um, the research methods question for A2, the 15 marker, and the scenario about the ink. Um, I'm kind of going to use the one that I had for the 12 marker and slightly adapt it so that you can see how you can kind of change what you've already got. Um, so we've got to first off choose whether you're doing an independent measure design or a repeated measure design. So I'm going to use an independent. Um, spell it right. uh, for this study, I would use an independent measures design. Uh, let's get rid of that context there. Um, as the participants will either learn words in green ink or black ink and then be tested on their memory performance. And therefore, we and performance, and therefore they will only take part in one condition of the IV, and their scores will be compared with another participant who did another condition. It's a bit long-winded, but it's okay. Uh, this design controls things such as demand characteristics and order effects, as the um, as the participants, it doesn't really tell you in the story who they are, does it? As the participants, uh, we'll not be able to guess that whether ink is in green or black uh, will affect their memory. Is being investigated, it's only take part in one condition of the IV, so they won't change their answers to please the research or get bored or fatigued by the second condition. And therefore, show a decreased memory performance. It's a bit of extra stuff to know. Um, in my own research on the effect of physical coordination on memory, when participants memorise a word list whilst catching a ball and then without catching a ball and repeat measure design, should perhaps put some comments in there. Their performance was affected by the second condition by order effects and therefore was invalid. Thus, by using a independent measures design in this study, results about how memory is affected by the colour of ink should be more valid. This design, in fact that's totally the one. Okay, so that's the point for that first one. Um, as you can see, I kept the own research exactly the same, absolutely exactly the same as what I did for the 12 marker, because it's the same point. I can use it, I don't have to change it. You know, if you memorise some piece of research, you can use it every time for every time you talk about a design. So, or you could just chop and change it, you know, and say that they did an independent measures if you're talking about repeated or vice versa. Uh, you know, you can change it up. And you saw how easy it was for me there to change it from a match pairs to an independent measures design. I just took a little bit of stuff off um, and just adapted it around a little bit. So it's quite easy once you've got the base structure to then adapt it to whatever they ask you. Then the second thing they ask you is how variables are operationalized. Now, on the AS paper, they ask about the DV anyway, so we can kind of keep that. Uh, the dependent variable in the study will be a score out of 10 on a rating scale, with one being, right, now this we can't keep rating scale because we're talking about memory, so the dependent variable in the study will be a score out of 10 on a um, memory test. This will be used as it will produce quantitative data and therefore is easy to analyse as it is objective numerical data and will be less likely to be influenced by researcher bias. In my own research, I conducted a questionnaire where the students felt stressed during exam time and this produced qualitative data which was very descriptive and difficult to analyse and interpret and therefore led to less reliable results as if someone else had analysed it. Which probably puts comms in. Um, it would more likely to get a different interpretation, therefore quantitative data in the study will lead to more valid results on whether having a... well, whether having... Um, words learnt in green ink compared to black ink affects a person's 
and then the file hit. Uh, we'll be a Scarlet account on a memory cast, um, which contains words such as hat, table, tree, etc. Just put a bit of extra stuff in there. Um, so we've not talked about the IV, so we might want to talk about that because it says uh, variables. So the um, independent, in fact we've already kind of mentioned the independent variable we've talked about it up there. It might be an idea to talk about those before we talk about the design, thinking about it. So maybe stick that one up there and then put in this one, the independent variable will be whether that, the words, well, whether words are coloured in green ink or black ink. It will be whether words that have to be let's put memorised are coloured in green ink or black ink. And then we've got that there. So then the next thing to do is at least two controls. So in the AS paper it was controls as well, so it's quite straightforward to this one. So to control for extraneous variables, I've made sure that the um that the words were printed on paper in the same font, size, and colour, um dependent on condition. To ensure that this did not affect people's memories people's memories um, such as uh, rather than um, such as certain words being in different shades of green may decline memory because it is not a consistent colour for all participants. So like that gives it a bit more context. In my own research on whether colours have all right now I can't use this one because this is the one that we're actually talking about because I use it for the AS one because they've done something different. So they were talking about pets and lawyers which you can't say that you've given a pet to an elderly person because that's not a feasible thing that you would have done at college. Um, so let's change this. So in my own research on whether, um, oh, let's see, on whether, did we talk about physical coordination up here? Yeah, we already did that one, didn't we? And we said an exam stress there. Hmm, what could we talk about? Whether or not, so we're trying to think of an extreme variable of control. So in my own research on whether, um, whether uh, participants were affected by uh, invasion of personal space we did not standardise the distance we stood from all participants and so some of them were affected differently to others because in some cases we were a lot closer. And therefore invalidate our results as it wasn't because, let's just leave that out there. Therefore in this experiment I will ensure that it is typed um, on a computer with a standardised shade of colour. So all that colour is going to be something between having, between words printed in green or black. And the 
effects on memory. Another, because they've asked for two, in fact, I might put that there. Um, yeah, so another extraneous variable. Um, that may occur would be um, having different oh, having different lengths of time to memorize the list may impact oh, impact on memory performance and so each participant will be given two minutes to memorise the list of words. You may only accept whether participants are affected by those requests, not standardised it, therefore invalid. Therefore, this is done, I will ensure that it is typed. Oh, maybe I should change that. Let's see. I would make sure that the words are printed on paper in first. I will ensure that it's typed because I'm not sure. Work and displayed all at the same length of time for each participant. Okay. Not actually caught. Not so bad. Recently, said for all the participants and for how long, and so some of them will get stupid about. Okay, that's fine. So that's that one. And then what have we got left? Level of data. This one a lot of you got wrong, really wrong, because you didn't know what level of data meant. Uh, level of data means um, green, green. Level of data means ordinal nominal ratio interval. Um, the example really just talks about interval, so it'd be fine if you said that. So um, for this study, I would use um, let's just put interval and do do that. So no, it's green, isn't it? Use interval data, interval data as the. In fact, we're probably better putting this one after the DV. So this way, I would use interval data. I would collect. This study, I would therefore collect interval data as the participants' memory score as the as the dependent dependent. Well, I can't spell today. Dependent variable is the participant's memory score. Using this type, using this level of data, um, will be more objective and easier to interpret. In fact, this is very much like the numerical stuff here. You might be okay to just put mm, a bit iffy actually about this one, whether you could put that. But interval data is dependent variable. The memory score using this level of data will be more objective and easier to interpret. It's going to be the same point as that. Let me just check the mark. So, this is the mark scheme here. It kind of says that this bit here is the addressing bit that I've talked about to you in class. So, if you address it, you're basically saying what you're going to use. So, we've said in that one that we're going to use interval data. Um, and we've applied it because we've said that we're using a memory score. Um, from each participant. In fact, that just probably needs a bit more clarification on the answer. So, this study I would therefore collect interval data for the dependent variables of, is each participant's memory score, which will be compared, um, which we can be prepared to see if the 
see the difference between seeing words printed in green ink or black ink. I think that should be enough because the broad discussion of decisions concerning the method described to conduct the research, that's kind of when you're saying things are good and when you link it to your own research. So there's kind of seven marks there. So you should really get two in there, two in there. Um, Oh, have I sectioned things off there? Oh, oh. oh that's extra, isn't it? Let me think. So let's see. So we've got four, two in there, two in there, and two in there, two, four, six. Hmm. I've probably got more in there actually. So I think that should be okay. Uh, level of data is a bit of an iffy one because you, the point of your know, interval data having a score is really because it's objective, you can make a easy comparison, but you've kind of already said that when you've talked about uh, when you justify using that DV. So maybe it would be okay. Maybe it's probably stick this in here. Um, and then they can go together. Um, I think that that should be okay. If you have the time, then obviously put other things in, like the sample um, and how they're actually, you know, what you're actually getting them to do in the experiment. It's not quite clear exactly what they're doing. That's why I put that kind of um, those words in. Where have I put it? I've put hats and stuff like that. Where have I put it? Hats. Here. No, not there. Not there. Oh, I delete stuff off by accident. Yeah, let's just have a look. And I moved it before, I think I deleted some stuff. Oh, right. Mm, I'll sort it out. Right. Okay, I feel like I found it hat table and trees there. Um, so putting extra stuff in like that putting things like you're going to show it for two minutes and things like that um, you could probably add some more stuff in to make it better but that there will hit the marking criteria so it's kind of just about padding this out a little bit so there's a bit of extra stuff in there um, to get the marks in the exam. I hope that was helpful if you've got any questions just let me know. Oh.